Kled Shed is a local independent retailer of used and repaired 125 motorcycles. Now I was lucky enough to actually go there myself. Big shout out to George for showing me around and having a great discussion. I love how the place looks with the bikes on the left for sale and the bikes on the right that are being restored just in case you see something you might fancy in the future. That's right, please check out their website, link in the description below. Hello, I am the Rhythmic Biker. And did you know, the first female racer took part in the Isle of Man TT back in 1962. Last week, we were joined by Esther, a local artist and delivery rider who walked us through the highs and lows of a female rider. This week, we're joined by an accountant with a taste for speed. These are the wolf tales. on. I hate being on the camera. <laughs> I'm Gemma Hannaford. Um, I am a bike rider and a racer. I passed my test when I was 31, so I came to it quite late. Took up some track days to try and get some experience. And then last year took the plunge and decided to do some racing with my husband in the Free Tech Endurance series. Then I decided I wanted to give it a go solo. This season I'm racing with Bemzy, racing a Kawasaki Ninja 300 in the ACU Green Team Senior Cup. That's me. So unfortunately, in Gemma's first race of the day, she has found a problem with her quick shifter. Now, for those of you who don't know how a quick shifter works, these guys are racing at such speed, at such high RPM, that they've got a great little device that allows them to kick up into the gears without engaging the clutch. Now, as I've mentioned, Gemma has unfortunately found a problem with hers, which is meaning every single time she's going up the gears, she needs to engage the clutch. Now, that wouldn't be a problem for you or me, but for these guys who are racing, every millisecond counts. So she's done the sensible thing, she's brought it back into the pits, they're gonna put it on the dyno, get it all sorted, and hopefully she'll be back in for her second race of the day. So this week, we are joined by Gemma, who is entering her very first season as a solo racer on her Kawasaki Ninja 300. We follow her, as she shows us through the ever-changing environment involved in motorcycle racing. But before all that, let's dive straight in to the deep dive. So, welcome to the deep dive. I'm here with Gemma and John, and they have, uh, well, we're at Brands Hatch, a uh, change of scenery today. You're, uh, you're here on a way, uh, race weekend. Uh, can you tell us what the bike is for us? Yeah, it's a 2013 Kawasaki Ninja 300. Fantastic stuff. And um, why have you selected this bike for, for the racing, your solo racing? Why have we gone for the Kawasaki 300? Just from recommendation from other people. Um, we know a guy called Phil Atkinson who recommended this bike as a good entry bike into racing. And this is sort of a good series to, um, to you know, sort of give, give yourself a bit of a taster of racing, really. So, um, yeah. Fantastic stuff and uh, obviously as I've mentioned this is Gemma's first solo race weekend. How are you getting on with the bike so far? Are you enjoying it? Are you getting the responsive? Is it confidence inspiring? Tell us how you're feeling about it. Yeah it's, it's going really well. Had a test day on it on Friday which went well. Had three sessions in the wet, a couple of se uh, so three sessions in the dry and a couple of sessions in the wet so got to sort of see it all over shall we say. Um, the first race I had yesterday was going... I 
didn't have a very good start, sort of did a little wheelie at the start, um, ended up dead last, but caught up and um, managed to overtake, I think, three or four people. Um, however, on the last um, corner, clearways, um, so I was being lapped and the person lapping me caught my front tyre with their back tyre, which ended up sitting me up and obviously nearly going towards the kitty litter. Um, but managed to keep it on track, but lost a few places. Um, second race, again, didn't have a very good start, ended up dead last, got back a few positions. Um, but the bike didn't feel brilliant, so um, had a few sort of wobbles going around clearways, brought it in and we found out actually the sprocket carrier bearing had gone. Um, so that would have been why um, it didn't feel brilliant. And then this morning we had, went out again, feeling okay, went out in practice and it was fine. First race, um, quick shifter failed, so I had to retire. So um, we've had a look at it, got it on the dyno and the, it has definitely failed. So we've had to sort of unplug it and um, go back to the old way of uh, using a clutch. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Would, yeah. you, would you mind just quickly explaining to us how the quick shifter works, how it benefits you on track and uh, during the races? Yeah, so basically what the quick shifter does is it allows you to keep the throttle pinned on. So when you change gear and you go up, you don't lose. I mean, you're talking milliseconds of time, you're not, but it's in, you know, every second counts in, in racing. So having that really does help. Obviously, when you don't have the quick shifter, you're having to come off the throttle, pull the clutch in, change up and, you know, with the quick shift, you still have to change down using the clutch, um, but yeah, it it does really help, and I've got I've got used to using it now. So I think it's going to be un, it's going to be strange going into the second race this afternoon, sort of having to use the clutch again <laughs> after learning, you know, not to use it. So going back to those old-fashioned ways, a man who I'm sure who knows that every second counts would be your supportive husband John here, who himself has also had a long and extensive uh, racing career. John, how is the race weekend going for you? How's Gemma performed so far in your uh, well, opinion? It's obviously uh, very different for me being the other side of the garage um, normally of course I'm the stressful one and uh, you know worrying about have I got enough of fuel you know is everything working right tyre pressures etc uh, but I'm doing it for Gemma now so it's completely different absolutely I can imagine it must be so strange for you to be on this side of the garage like I say you've experienced it yourself how would you determine this bike how is this bike performance wise for you is this a good entry level for Gemma to begin on or or how is it back you know when you when you started racing how how would this have competed in that time uh it's about the same brake horsepower as what i started on actually um i started on a yamaha uh yr5 which is a 1973 350 yamaha um it had about 36 brake horsepower this has got 37 so it's a good uh, entry level machine to start on uh not too much power um but it revs really high so you can still get a lot of speed out of it um, and it's a good tool to learn on you know there's no there's no real vices with the bike um, you don't want a bike that that, that is very twitchy um, and you know tries to catch you out at every turn this is very sort of docile this is it's perhaps the wrong word but you know what, I, what I'm trying to say is it, it, it's got no vices and you can concentrate on learning a the circuit and b how to race fantastic stuff and unfortunately Gemma's told us a few things have gone wrong on the weekend as an experienced uh, as an experienced racer is that is that normal maybe to have these few issues here and there or is this just an out of the blue once occurrence it, it can happen um, it shouldn't happen as much with this type of machine because basically these are production what we would call back in the day production racers so they're they're not highly strung uh, everything is uh, you know well tested because it's a road bike um, so really you shouldn't have too much trouble with the bike itself but there's always the, the possibility of the electronics playing up which is what we've had today um, and things like wheel bearings well that's that's wear and tear basically so um, you know you don't expect those to go at a race meeting but they can happen so apart from that really um, you put fuel in it you press the starter and off you go sounds like many highs and lows of the race weekend that can occur have you had a go on it yourself uh, since since having it yes i have uh we took it to cadwell park for a track day and Gemma very kindly let me ride it how uh, nice how nice of you oh yeah oh yeah i had to twist her arm but yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah i took it out and uh yeah it's, it's very nice it's very nice enjoy it yeah that's brilliant stuff 
Um, Gemma, going back to you, obviously, as we've mentioned, this is your first race, solo race weekend um, of the season. How are you expecting for the bike to perform throughout the year? And more importantly, how are you expecting yourself to progress and improve as the year goes on? Yeah, well, I've already progressed already. Um, you know, first of everything I've done, um, but also every race, my lap times have got quicker. Um, I think I started on a 108 qualifying yesterday, finished on a 103, um, and even today, you know, the times are beginning to sort of come down again. Um, so it's that's that's my key, I think, is is lap times. I've never been here before. Um, obviously, conditions are so changeable. We had beautiful sunshine yesterday, spitting rain today, you know. Um, so it's very difficult to pick what tyres you need and to the conditions, especially when you don't know the bikes particularly well. Um, but towards, I think my main aim is not come last, which I haven't yet, touch wood, um, and also just progress upwards and get faster lap times and just feel more confident. Um, my problem is I go out and I think it takes me a few laps to get back into the race and I think I need to sort of just go out there and be race ready straight away. Um, but again, that comes with time and experience. So um, yeah, I think that's probably been brought about by doing uh, track days. Yeah. Because you can on a track day, there's no pressure, so you can go out at your own pace and build up and build up and build up. And she's done quite a few track days, so it, uh, racing is completely different, particularly at circuits like Brands Hatch, which is about a mile circuit. So Happy you've got you can't give any time away at all. You know, when they're lapping sub one minute. You have to be on it straight away. You can't give it away. It does sound like you're basically pinned on the throttle for yeah. pretty much most of this, if yeah. not this whole lap. Yeah. Uh, a question to both of you, obviously, as, as you've explained, there's a lot of factors involved, but these are production bikes, you know, not a lot has necessarily gone into modifying the bike at all, but how important are little tiny factors, i.e. the quick shifters, pinning on the whole throttle, learning these tracks? Uh, Gemma, starting with you, how important do you think every little factor is and the difference it can make? Every Everything, every, every little helps, you know. The, the quick shifter was I mean it's when I started using that when before I was using it I was losing you know so much time believe it or not and now I'm using that and you know keep the good thing about these bikes is because there's not much power you can take bends and corners you know really well so you gain a lot of time with that as well um, but yeah I, I'll take anything if it's going to make me go faster quite frankly <laughs> and John you've been racing a little longer so uh, let's let's see what 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 little factors have impacted and, and make the big difference in a race weekend for you uh for particularly for Gemma what we look for is um minimal friction so we look at things like uh the wheels spinning freely so there's no binding uh the chain is correctly adjusted and is well lubricated so it's free um, and she's already mentioned the quick shifter um, and fueling so we, we want to make sure that the fueling is correct so we've got an electronic uh, power commander fitted which monitors the fuel delivery um, so all these little things you know if you've got a wheel binding it's going to slow you down so we always beginning of the day we put the bike on uh, paddock stands spin the wheels make sure they're nice and free uh, and uh, as long as the quick shifter is working you're good to go good to go that sounds fantastic how does this bike line up to the competition you know, what what other sort of examples do people bring and where where would you rank this up there with the, the competition starting with yourself Gemma um, well this bike actually came second in a championship last year so in theory it's meant to be quite good um, however it is a 300 in this series that I'm racing you get 300s and 400s um, so it where one gains, the other one loses. So they're pretty even, to be honest. Um, but because they're production, they're pretty much all the same. You can't, you know, fiddle around too much with them. You've got suspension, you know, and then you've also got the rider with body position and getting down and, you know, wide rider weight is, is another thing, you know, that really helps on, on a bike that's not particularly powerful. Um, so when you're racing against the teens, um, that's difficult. Although I do get some of them down the straight, so. <laughs> get some of them. Something I have noticed is uh, a lot of the riders here today are very short. Red, I think you would, uh, I think Red would be <laughs> suited for this very much. Um, John, obviously 300s, 400s in the same class. Obviously, yep, the rider's important, but to you, what, what is the big, what's the big factor? What really decides those outcomes for you? It's the rider, without a doubt. Yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, I mean, Gemma 
will probably back this up that you know I've been out in races on a bike that's got half the brake horsepower of the rest of the field and I've still managed to pass people and you know finish well up in the points so it's not it's not all about brake horsepower uh, and when it's when it's pretty even race uh, even machines like this it's purely down to the rider no pressure there then no unfortunately yeah it's down to me <laughs> and, and I've just got to ask obviously with John here John's got so much experience how much of a benefit how much of an advantage and how much of a help do you think that that's going to be for you having John's experience his knowledge everything that he the whole question, yeah, perfect. I didn't, to be fair, I didn't even hear myself. No, I was like, <laughs> What's she saying? I've just got to ask obviously, we've talked about the facts with the bike, the facts with the riders. You obviously have John here. John's obviously got experience. He's raced, he's raced for years and years and years. How much of an advantage or how much of a factor do you think it is having John here supporting you with his knowledge and experience? Yeah, very, very careful answer. Well, I like it. I don't think he does. I think he'd rather be on it, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, being able to do it as a, as a married couple is just, you know, great. And um, there's not many couples that race together. You know, um, we do do the endurance racing together as a team as well, which is which is great. Um, but everyone in the paddock is just amazing. You know, the advice that they're giving me. You know, they're just even on tires and things like that. You know, it's just everyone. You know, just digs in, and it's brilliant. If you if you need a part, you've got people chasing around for you. You know, it's just such a great place to be. I got involved with racing um, because my husband John, he um, was racing classic motorcycles um, and I kind of wanted to give it a go. I thought, you know, not many women out there, so yeah, why not? I did, I did a lot of go-karting, so thought, you know, some of the skills could be transferable and um, yeah, that's, that's how I started. I do think there's limitations in the biking world for us women. One of them is, is leathers. I mean, these have been custom made because I've found it very difficult to find any off the rack that fitted me well. It'd be nice to see more females racing as well. There's only two of us in the paddock this weekend. I'd just love to promote it more for women. And it's fun, you know, give it a go. You only live once after all. There are a lot of Facebook groups that promote riding in women. I put a post up about my racing in one of the groups. The amount of comments I had, people were just so happy to see women out there you know on a bike and doing racing the motion through that is great last year I did some endurance racing I'd done track days prior to that so I had some sort of track experience but I wanted to kind of get a get a feeling of what racing entailed me and my husband John we put together a team called Team Skid Marks and we took part in the free tech endurance race very steep learning curve bought a little Honda CBR 125R ended up going around a go-kart track for four hours some of the most fun I've ever had absolute carnage because you know you don't need a bike license for it got youngsters there but it kind of added to the whole fun of it really really did enjoy that and just thought take it to the next step and give it a go doing some solo racing this year the biggest challenge is always going to be financial the one I'm doing is probably one of the cheapest forms of racing the initial outlay of the bike the leathers the helmet the kit everything I'm very lucky that I've got some great sponsors who helped me get on to the racing ladder shall we call it but apart from that the support I've had from so many people even just advice has just been incredible my mum wasn't keen on me riding a bike initially it filled her with absolute dread but she is now one of my biggest supporters and actually one of my sponsors which is lovely because she can see how happy the biking has made me she's really embraced that and everyone has just been so supportive i think i was called an inspiration I, you know to me i'm not i want to do it because it's fun do it simple do it the best experience you can get on a bike is around a track. Yeah, the problem with road, you've got all the trees, walls, houses, cars coming in opposite directions. Don't get on the track and you can just concentrate on your riding and improving your riding. And I think that is key. Taking your bike on a track day so you can learn your bike and feel more confident. I think with a lot of women, we don't necessarily feel confident on the bike. Having something like that can really, really bring us on. This is my first proper solo race weekend and I've experienced every high and low I think you can probably get. I've nearly crashed, I've had problems with the bike, 
bike. I've had problems with my own riding, but there's also been highs in the fact that every lap I'm getting quicker. Every race I've gone out, I've got quicker. Every race I've gone out, I'm gaining positions. And that is what it all comes down to. It's bettering myself, proving that us girls can do it as, as well as the boys, really. <laughs> So there we have it. We've seen just how many obstacles can randomly appear throughout a race weekend, and just how much these riders have to adapt to all the time. Remember, we would love to have you as a guest here on Wolf Tales, telling us all about your stories and your experiences throughout your motorcycle journey. Please remember to like and comment on this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, this video is kindly brought to you by Kled Shed. I am the Rhythmic Biker, and these are the Wolf Tales. <laughs> these are the Wolf Tales. <laughs>